Hello all, Rick here once more with a video covering the Pioneer class. Now I already covered this ship from its appearance in Star Trek Online, but now it's actually a canonical vessel thanks to its inclusion as one of the ships within the Starfleet Starship Museum of Athen Prime, which is exciting for me as it's a favourite, or at least one that I enjoy. So let's take a look at the lore of this vessel and how it ties in to the continuity of Starship designs in the Prime timeline. However, first off, its origin. It was created for Star Trek Online by concept artist Hector Ortiz and then modelled by Thomas Moroni to be the first vessel that the characters would captain if they picked the original series era as their starting point in 2016. It does not last beyond the introductory missions, as the player is then recruited as a temporal agent and brought into the rest of the STO setting. The design was created to resemble the Constitution class in profile and general looks, because the player needed to feel immersed in that era without actually being on one of the prestigious Constitution class vessels, considering its eventual fate. Plus the Constitution class in its TOS style, was already regarded as a separate in-game purchase. We can see that from the front and rear the vessel shares a very similar profile to the classic Connie, although its changes become more apparent when viewed from different angles and overall, I like the design. There are only so many configurations you can make with the basics of two nacelles, saucer and a secondary hull. So the Pioneer was made pretty much to fit alongside the other designs present in that era and includes many elements that line up from the colour of the deflector dish to the paint details all over it. In universe, this class was designed in response to the success of the Constitution class, which itself has been around since the 2240s. The Constitution remained the poster vessel for Starfleet and received several upgrades and refits over its lifetime. And while that sort of attention was not delivered to many other classes, they could still benefit from the developments in technology. Around the 2260s, the Constitution was given a smoother finish that resembled its TOS appearance based on newer hull designs and the Pioneer was created around this time. The reasoning for its creation was to ease the burden on the Constitution class, which was undoubtedly the Federation's deep space explorer and foremost vessel when charting the unknown. The Pioneer class would be there to undertake such missions as the Connie, however for a shorter period of time, freeing up the Constitution class to partake in such ambitious projects like the famed five-year exploratory missions. The first of the class was the USS Pioneer NX-1500, built in 2260 and tested extensively in the following years, entering service before 2270, alongside several other Pioneer class starships. Internally, its aesthetic and layout was identical to the Constitution class, suggesting that even the bridge module was reused, lending further support to the notion that it was built alongside one of the Constitution's overhauls. However, it utilised the same nacelles as the 2250s era version of that vessel, complete with the four antennae, which suggests a warp system that was not quite up to date. Additionally, it had a smaller internal volume with a smaller crew capacity of only 200 personnel across 19 decks. However, it was replete with engineering and science labs that were smaller yet still top of the line, showing its priorities. The class was 221 metres long, 117 wide and 63 tall, making it smaller than a Miranda class. The Pioneer class was classified as a light or utility cruiser and worked well in its role as an explorer. Its warp system was actually a lot slower than its contemporaries, with a cruise speed of warp 6 and a maximum of 7, which again is likely due to the older nacelle design that was dropped in later vessels. This is fine however, as mentioned, the Pioneer was not a long term explorer, so it did not need the top of the line engines reserved for those other ships, making it easier and quicker to build. What it did have however, 
was a powerful communications and sensor system that rivaled most Federation science ships and a dedicated long-range comm system as seen on the rear of the vessel. At impulse speeds, it was decently manoeuvrable thanks to the placement of its engines being spaced rather far apart when compared to most older vessels. In terms of armaments, however, it was very modest. Although they were top of the line, it only had one dual phaser array at the fore and a single beam at the aft, while it had three torpedo launchers, two fore and one rear facing. So by no means was this a heavy hitter, but again it's not its mission profile to engage hostiles. It had decent shielding on par with others, so defensively it was able to weather a beating, even standing up to a Klingon battlecruiser, but again alongside the Constitution and Miranda class, it still came off the weakest. Having said that however, it was often assigned as patrol and defensive duties considering its good communications systems allowed it to report back with little problem, but in large engagements it was best served as a support ship. It had a rear-facing shuttle bay that contained two Class F shuttles, a smaller quantity than usual. Overall, this vessel is basically a lightweight constitution, smaller on every aspect and scale except for its shielding, sensors and comms, and scientific ability. It's slower, less armed, and with fewer facilities for long-term missions, which fits perfectly with its role. As mentioned, it was there to free up other vessels that would be better equipped for deep space missions, while these ships were to head out and explore a specific thing and return within a month or so. We see that in canon, the USS Pioneer is memorialised in the Fleet Museum, showing that it was a respected line worthy of preservation in some form, and in apocryphal materials we have several more, one of which was destroyed in a temporal war related incident in 2270 by a Klingon task force. The vessel also occupies an important role, in that it is much needed bolstering of the TOS era Starfleet ship variety, albeit a later addition. There have been plenty of great designs created surrounding that era, but so few of them make it into continuity, making it look like the Constitution was Starfleet's only vessel for a time. Recently however we have Strange New Worlds adding the Farragut, Archer and now the retroactive canonization of the Pioneer, adding more details to that era and it's fantastic. However, technically aside from the fact it exists in canon, we know nothing else about it. Thanks for watching this breakdown on the Pioneer class starship. I've been Rick and I'll see you next time for another lore video, thanks again and goodbye.